when half a year ago rumors for a $130 brick-built Minecraft llama surfaced, I knew that was going to be an easy pass because that sounded absolutely ridiculous. But here we are in June of 2020 and the set is awesome. Let's take a closer look. This is the third largest LEGO Minecraft set ever produced, following the two direct-to-consumer sets released a number of years ago at this point, The Mountain Cave and The Village. This set has 1,252 pieces, which is insane that after 10 years, the Minecraft line is going strong enough to warrant a set that large. And yes, this, this thing is very, very big. Where to even begin. We might as well start with the figures because like a lot of these Minecraft sets, that's always my favorite part. I've reviewed two other summer 2022 Minecraft sets and the figure selection in those was great. And this does not drop the ball by any means. Seven of the nine characters included in this set are exclusive and the other two that are included are great to have extras of. So the first figure up here is another player skin. This is the Llama Knight. And I did not realize until I actually built this set, I didn't even realize until a little bit after I had built this set, but he actually has this llama cape looking thing on the back. Uh, this figure is wonderful for a number of reasons. Uh, the color scheme is great, but look at that wonderful metallic printing. Um, we've been seeing a lot of metallic printing in the Minecraft line, which is so, so awesome. I really, really like it. Again, I don't have a lot of the player skins, but I've really been liking the ones that have come out in this summer wave so far. He's got a diamond sword, which you've seen many times before, but always great to have. Um, the only thing I really dislike about the summer wave is that we don't get any armor pieces. I know it would cover up this wonderful player skin, but it would be nice just to have as an option. The second player skin here doesn't have any specialized printed pants, but it has a really fun torso. This is the Llama Herder. She has a stone shovel, which is a little bit more rare of an accessory. Is it for scooping llama poop? I'm not sure. This set also comes with a raid captain, crossbow, banner, and everything. This guy's shown up in one other set, um, but always good to get another one. And we get a Vindicator as well with the iron axe, which is done in that flat silver color. This is great for my personal pillager army, which is quite large at this point. I might have more pillagers than zombies, which is pretty funny. Very, very exciting is the fact that we get two new villager skins. These are Savannah villagers. We get a regular Savannah villager, just the default skin, quite great. My printing is off on the nose, which is a bit unfortunate, but other than that, uh, the Printing for the torso bit is really nice. Love the colors. And then we get a blacksmith villager as well. This one's rather special because he has a new printed headpiece with the eye patch. Again, more metallic printing there on the arms. $130 set entitled the Llama Village. Uh, obviously warrants the addition of some llamas. We get two brand new ones, which I wasn't expecting. I thought they'd be reusing the same wandering trader llamas, if anything. But both of these are new with new pieces. So we get this adult dark orange llama. So epic. It's dark orange. What more can I say? It's perfect. And then there's a baby llama. Of course, it makes use of the same adult headpiece, which makes it look kind of funny. But it's really, really cute. And the real reason I bought this set is for this little guy right here. We got another sheep color. If I recall correctly, this is actually the seventh uh, sheep color that we've gotten from the Minecraft line, which means we are almost halfway through all the possible sheep colors. Lego Minecraft cannot end. I will not allow it to end until we have all 16 sheep variants. You better be listening, Lego. Oh, this makes me so happy. I hope I can pick up a lot more. Uh, to have my pink sheep army. So of course these actually naturally spawn. So I, I felt this was a must that they make a pink sheep. I guess there is one more mob and that's a puffer fish, but we'll, we'll take a look at him later. He's nothing new, but still wonderful to get. Figure lineup here, 10 out of 10. They're all like new or rare. It's great. Uh, I have no complaints here. Build process for this set, much like every other Lego Minecraft set ever. It's basic bricks on top of basic bricks. It was funny to me that the rating of this set is actually nine plus, where the rest of them are typically eight plus. The Nether Bastion had more complicated techniques than this set. I, maybe they're gauging 
patience, like you need more patience to build this set, but there's nothing complicated here. That being said, because of the size of the bricks, it comes together very quickly and very satisfyingly. I, I really have nothing to say about the build process. I built this with my wife, so this is an easy 10 out of 10. That was very nice of you to say. Thank you. Yes, it worked. If you don't build this with your wife, this set will probably be a five out of 10 building experience for you. Th this set comes apart into multiple sections. This is the suggested layout that the instructions give you, but there's many, many different options for this set. Because there are all these supplied six by 12, six by 12 uh, base plates added around the build. All of which feature the village aspect of the set. So these are structures similar to what you would find in a Minecraft village. Uh, we'll start out with the simple one. Uh, <laughs> two, two flowers on a base plate. This is actually useful to have just because it provides some breathing room. Uh, between these modules, as you see, you can get, pack these pretty close together in some layouts. So this is actually nice to have. Two flowers again, but this time we got a well with a bell. This is actually pretty well done. Uh, we got two of those nice trans blue two by two jumpers in the middle, and then a bell design that we first saw, I believe, on the Illager raid set. We got a little farm here as well with wheat and potatoes. Two more of those two by two jumpers. I like this and the use of the cobble wall here just on a jumper is very nice as well. Onto the three bigger ones, we got a stable here, two blocks of wheat on either side. This is intended for the llama or the sheep, but it's got plenty of height so you can fit both llamas in there. With ease, there's jumpers to place them on. I love getting all this medium nougat in this build as well. Then we get two larger structures here. And the reason these are designed the way they are, these are meant to be steps, which help you access higher levels in the llama. So this is a trading post. Again, you can see there, we actually got like the Nautilus shell and then a one by one tile there meant to represent an emerald. This one is probably the most special. So this is the blacksmith module specifically. And on the inside, I pointed this out in the reveal video, there is actually a blast furnace print, which is not something I ever would have expected to get. More of that wonderful metallic printing all over that. Uh, there's also the grindstone. As simple as these are, you put them all together and you actually have, even just here, a pretty substantial village. Now, the magic of these is that you can put them anywhere you want on the llama structure. So there's room for three of these modules to go on the back of the llama. There's room for three of the modules to go underneath. There's room for one at the back. And here's where you can see that stair function. Basically you walk up here and then climb the vines the rest of the way to enter the llama through, through its through its butt. That's why this channel is not for kids. In addition to that, you can also attach the modules to the outside of the llama because of all these included two by four bricks, they can pretty much go anywhere you want. So the, all the modules can be on the ground. You can put all the modules inside the llama on top of it. There's so many different options. And I am really glad to see that. I think that's something the Minecraft line should take advantage of. I think it's, it has the ability to do that very well. I'd like to see more modularity between different sets. Um, but it is good to see it introduced at all, even if it all is in the one giant set. And furthermore, the llama itself does come apart as well, though the advantages of making the llama come apart are not as amazing as, it's like, I guess you could put the legs on top of the llama. I don't know what you accomplish by doing that, but it's an option. So the legs do split off about halfway up. You can make a shorter llama, like a baby llama? I guess I hadn't tried that before. Is that even good? It's probably not gonna work. If I take the acacia tree, by the way, acacia tree uh, also showed up in the Illager raid set or something very similar to it. I think the dark green is actually a really good choice. And that's probably something I'll use in my own mocks. You can make really short llama, very cool. But that's what the bottom looks like. There's just some jumpers and tiles to place. Again, three village modules on the inside and get all these leg bits. Uh, what's great too about this model is it's a very 360 model. A lot of the Minecraft sets do that very well. As far as Minecraft sets go, it looks good from all angles, uh, which is nice. It's completely enclosed. However, it's really easy to get 
on the inside as the entire back plate does come off. And this, look at that, isn't that wonderful? It opens to reveal this extremely lavish interior. Just look at all that space. You don't get this much space inside like a modular building. It's wonderful. Lots of exciting things going on in here, obviously, but there's still plenty of breathing room. It doesn't feel cluttered at all, which is... When have you seen a Lego interior in an official kit that doesn't look cluttered? It's crazy. Up here towards the llama's neck, we got two beds for our two players. And then in between them, we have that aquarium with the puffer fish. So the puffer fish is making its second appearance after the coral reef set, a $10 set from a little bit ago. Great set, by the way. In the middle, there's a bookshelf and there's a creeper head in there as some rather macabre trophy. Definitely the first set we've just gotten the creeper head and not the body. So that's always interesting. There's two chairs um, and as illegal as the chairs look, I believe the look they're going for here are signs on the side of a slab and then a trap door on the back. At least that's how I would make it. Towards the back here, you'll see we have a furnace and a crafting table, potted flour, and also a pork chop piece, a cooked pork chop. This also was included in the nether bastion, but it's nice to get another one. And then there's just a bit of interior space higher up on the neck. And that actually gives us a one by one rounded tile with a compass print on it. And then we get the second edition Minecraft two by two map tile there as well. And then you can look out at the world through this slit in the llama's neck. Beautiful stuff. Aside from all the reconfigurability options, of course, that the set offers, there's really only one main action feature, and then it's, of course, that the llama can spit on you. My bricks are so new, though, it doesn't really work all that well. There's a, there's a little mechanism you can pull out in the back, and then it should drop these two tiles, but I just gotta give them a little nudge, which is, which is fine. And the great part of it too, is that these water blocks are topped with two by two blue tiles. And so when you fill it up, it's perfectly flush on the head of the llama. So it's also worth noting that I did try to build this in game and I ran into a few problems. It's not 100% game accurate. As you can see here, we get an indentation of a block and a half, which of course is not possible before continuing up the neck where we get yet another indentation of a block and a half. And of course we get some, I guess you could accomplish this with signs potentially. It does not translate perfectly into Minecraft. Uh, you'll notice some other things too, where the incline is a bit odd. Uh, that being said, it is still very authentically Minecraft. I think it is by far the best looking large mob structure thing that they've done. Of course, that just has to deal. It's $130, it better look the best. They didn't cut corners at all. It does look really good. And I'm glad they chose the Wandering Trader variant of this llama, just because there's so much great colors. Uh, very classic Lego colors. It's a fun and goofy set. I, I really do enjoy the finished product quite a bit. If I had to say something about part selection, it's a lot of basic bricks. It's a lot of base plates. There's a few fun things where you get four of those new, new-ish two by two trans blue jumpers. There's a lot of great Minecraft pieces in here with like that blast furnace, compass, the map, the puffer fish, but it's a thing insane. I'll give it a six out of 10 for part selection. If you're looking to up your count of basic bricks, especially in white. This is the set for you. As far as Minecraft sets go, I think this is a very good looking Minecraft set. So much so that I'm, it's, it's, I'm gonna give it a seven out of 10. And of course, last but not least, we should talk about the price. So this one is a $130 here in the US, $129.99. Um, I don't know how it fares in other regions. Hopefully it's not more. The other two sets that I reviewed, which is the bakery for $25 and the Nether Bastion for $35, I concluded that both were overpriced. This one doesn't feel overpriced. It is definitely expensive. It is the third most expensive LEGO Minecraft set ever produced. It's the most expensive regularly retail available Minecraft set ever produced. But there's a lot going on here. This thing is heavy. 
uh, <laughs> in terms of just raw plastic, if you melted this thing down, you, you just have more plastic at the end of the day than a lot of other $120, $130 sets on the market. I think the figure selection is fantastic. I feel like $120 would be the perfect price for this, but I do think this one is worth the $130. It is a very well done set and it's a tremendous amount of fun. It displays well as far as Minecraft stuff goes, which is not something I say lightly. I was on the fence for a while about picking it up. I was just thinking, oh, I'll get the figures on Bricklink. And I had a $20 voucher from Lego VIP and I decided to order it and I do not regret it at all. Even though I will part this thing out to make a snow biome of my own, it's really fun to have. And I should note too that it is the perfect size for your leopard gecko. Definitely get your hands on the pink sheep on Bricklink before I buy them all. That's all I've got for this time. Thank you so much for watching. Have a great life.